Thank you very much to Kathleen Jamie. Uh, I think like a lot of people in this room, I do enjoy reading novels, but, and in fact our next reader, Jacob Polly, has written a fine novel called Talk of the Town that's shot through with Cumbria and Carlisle dialects. But in the end, if you like reading poetry, then somehow all that beautiful white space around a poem and the fact you haven't got to worry about the flaming plot that keeps coming back. And in the end, it doesn't matter who done it. And in the end, it doesn't matter if the aunt is related to the uncle. And the great thing about poetry for me is that it can contain a mystery that in the end, it doesn't matter if you can't solve. And that's the great thing for me about Jacob Polly's work. One of his lines says, I am a wielder of water. And that's such a great image for getting us into Jacob Polly's poems. It always seems to me that it's as though Jacob has come across some family somewhere in a lost Cumbrian valley that's got its own myths and its own stories and its own secrets. And only Jacob can understand them and then convey them to us. And what he does is, he does take the ordinary. He does make it extraordinary. There's a, an exquisite three-line poem of his called November that just goes, you walk to the spa for kindling and coal, the moonlight still locked in next door's frozen car. And that to me is the essence of Jacob Polly, that the walk down to the spa for the groceries ends up with some moonlight locked in a car. Jacob Polly. Hello, it's so nice to be here and um, thank you for that introduction and it's a pleasure and an honour to read to you and to read with um, such extraordinary poets. It doesn't come along very well, it comes along every year, you know, for some people, but it doesn't come along every year for me, you know. Um, I, I, was, I was born in Carlisle, um, as, as Ian said, uh, which has a history of uh, many things, but... Uh, the ballad is one of them, the border ballads. And I'm going to read a, a, a ballad to start. Um, it's, so it's in, two, it's in vo the voice of a mother and the voice of a son. Uh, I'm not going to do the voices, you know. Uh, you're just going to have to, to um, try to, it's hard to listen, you know, but to just kind of work it out. Um, but you can imagine that they've, they've met in a, in a house, in a, in a kitchen. And when, when I was a teenager, I, and I'm ashamed to say it, um, began to patronize my mother, um, often in small ways, like calling her mother, yes, mother. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you might have done this. And we also used to uh, talk at cross purposes, um, often about uh, kind of things to do with feelings and things like that. And this is kind of what happens in this poem as well. They talk at cross purposes. Langley Lane. Stand up straight, my son. Don't slouch. Mother, I'm not slouching. There's nothing you need hide from me. You know I don't like touching. A mother must. It's in my hands to touch what's mine so briefly. To touch my son is one small proof that he's still strong and loves me. Mother, I wish you weren't at home and I could sit in peace. I'd hope to meet the dark alone and not to cause a fuss. My son, I'm bound to love no less the child who brings me pain. My son, what's spread across your shirt? You need not hide a stain. What I hide won't be undone and I'd not see your face. I spare myself the sight of one whose grief is my disgrace. Take a chair, my son. You're tired. Drink a glass of milk. You're up. You're down. Your brain's still soft. Your adulthood half built. You're pale, my son. You'll fade away. You need a bite to eat. Once I was young. And like you swayed, unsteady on my feet. Mother, soon I'll get my rest. So while I can, I'll stand. My son, what's loose at your left wrist? 
what spin from your hand? Mother, my hand is full of shame. It's pouring from my heart. I've walked it in from Langley Lane where trouble's known to start. If trouble starts, you've said to me, just turn and walk away. Langley Lane's blind corner led to find who blocked my way. Juan Artur once said, then spat. The youngest looking shoved me first. I shoved him harder back. He punched me in the chest. The leaves were still. The sun came out to scatter coins of light. And I saw gripped in his right fist a little silver spike. A spike at which I stared, surprised. A bloody silver spike at which he also stared, surprised. Our two boys looked alike. The sun went in. The siren moaned. Clouds crawled across the blue. They grabbed my phone. I started playing. What else was there to do? My son, I walked from Langley Lane. I walked from Langley Lane. I took small steps and often stopped to breathe around the pain. My son, I walked from Langley Lane. I walked from Langley Lane. I held myself to slow the stain and walked from Langley Lane. This is a kind of uh, riddle poem, so it's a poem spoken in the voice of a, of a creature, it's a kind of riddle, the kick, the kick, try to and you cannot home me here in the long line of new furrows where I hunker, squat and sleeker or haunch with ears stern. I could be earth itself, but I am not, and nor do I know any way into or beneath it. I sit days out, be they rainbowy, thunderstruck, bald or wisp, and come the dusk, I loll up to crop and work the green corn shoots, clover and the dew clean dandelion leaves. I lie. I did not want to move, but started I open the air between us. For there is in me such underlonging that giving you a small excuse, I kick the world away. And I'll finish with this. Um, it's, a, it's a poem um, inspired by quilting. Um, and before you, uh, it doesn't do much for the uh, um, reputation of po poetry, does it, for um, a writer poem inspired by quilts, but there we are. Um, it's, I wanted to write a, a quilt, you know, I wanted to kind of, I was looking at these beautiful quilts and you've seen quilts, right? It's kind of lovely. Um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to kind of write a, a, a quilt, so. It's a quilt poem, and thank you, this is my, my last poem. It's just called Lunarian. It's a kind of poem about, uh, about the, the, the moon and many other things like um, the nights at my grandfather's as well. Lunarian. There's a man in you, his face like melted tallow. For yours are the old words, and yours the old, unusable, soot-grimed things. I spy you tonight. One night from full, through a pair of cheap binoculars, hauling up the mountainside, your gong of chalk. If there were a pond nearby, upon whose surface you might lean your subtle silver highness, I would try to gaff and grapple you out of courtesy. For some nights, there's more bulge to the seams, more reflectance from your coal-bright craterscape. But tonight, 
unreason separates from reason as oil from water, dark from light, bedspread from blackout cloth, your reflection from yourself, O oh creamy, scraped out shell of a king crab, caught off a northeast sea coal beach, no less a beach for glittering black, its anthracitic curve laid down along the length of my occluded early mind at Grandpa's house in New Bingham, where at night I heard the harbour bell clonk like a bell around a black goat's neck. O oh, Caprine Sea, O oh, Grandpa Dark, there's a moonlight man with cords of silk who binds the destined together. But tonight my mind's undone, great turner away, O oh, hole of holes, wall knot of night. You break, you turn the tides, so give me blisters, burn my retinas, break my heart. Prove by silence that the mouth that speaks for me should whisper. The night be still, the stars be fixed. You are the moon, your silver dress, your disappearing constancy. The night be still. The stars are fixed. We move through phases of the flesh. Thank you. <laughs>